What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's Ryan here and today I want to talk about generics in Golang. Generics is a feature that allows you to write your code in a way where you don't have to repeat the same code over and over again. Generics has been a part of many other languages for years now, C++, Java, Rust, and so on, but it's rather new for Golang and it's probably the biggest update to the Go language pretty much ever. Uh, just came out recently in the 1.18 release in 2022. So again, generics in Golang, that's what we're going to go over today. And let's go ahead and jump into it. So let's say you have a function called add. And it takes in two parameters. One is a, which is an int. The other one is b, which is also an int. And in the end, we're going to return an int. And we're going to say return a plus b. As a sanity check, let's just run this, print the result, and yeah, three, just as we expected. So this is great and all. Um, the only problem is what if we want to pass in something other than an int? What if we change this to 1.1 and 2.2? We want these to be floating point numbers. Then what happens? Okay, yes, as expected, it's telling us, hey, this is a float you're trying to pass it as an int argument that doesn't work and so what we can do here is well we can say you know what let's make this add int and then make this another function called add float and then we can change all these to float 64 and just say okay add float and sure this works uh, as expected got a floating point error there but the problem is that we have multiple versions of this same logic, right? It doesn't make sense for all of these are doing A plus B. So we should be able to reuse this logic for different types, right? Well, now with generics, we can do that. So let's go back to our previous logic. So first of all, make sure you're using go 1.18 or later because this will not work on the older versions of Golang. So having said that, what we want to do is add some brackets here say t that's our new type and we're going to say int or float 64 and instead of int we're going to say t t and t basically we just turn this into a generic function now it's our ide is not complaining at least so we're passing in integers let's test it make sure that works yep and let's turn these into floating point numbers make sure that works and yep, as expected. This is cool, but the problem is there's a lot of different types of ints, right? There's int in 8, 16, 32, 64. So am I really going to go here and do int, int 8, int 16, blah, 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 float 32, yada, yada, yada. Uh, no, this is just a little bit too verbose. So the first thing I can do is... I can move this out, create something called num, and then we can say type num interface, blah, blah, blah. And what we just did is create our own data type called num, and that's what t is. And so saying the parameters and return type can be any one of these that are part of that interface. If we run it, yep, works as we expect it to. So still, it's a little bit verbose, kind of not the way we want to do things, right? And other languages that use generics, you don't even have to do this. Uh, if it were C++ or Java, you could just say T. And so what we can do here instead is let's get rid of num and we're going to say constraints dot ordered. You do need to manually import this into your project, but it's golang.org slash x slash exp slash constraints. What this is, is basically they took care of all the dirty work that we just did ourselves. So all the signed int types, all the unsigned int, combine those into a union, float 32, 64, complex. And they even added a string at the end of all that. So you can concatenate strings. So awesome. And if we run that, yep, works as expected. So let's go back to the original example where we had int and float 64. Okay, what if we have this function? We only care about ints and float 64s. We really don't care about all that other stuff. That's fine. It's very common in Go for us to create our own type aliases. So user ID, int, 
So this is the user ID is just an alias for int. Uh, and this should work, right? We should be able to pass in a user ID into this function. So let's try that. A equals user ID one, B equals user ID two. And let's pass in A and B here. Well, my IDE is complaining and saying, yeah, that doesn't work. What does the compiler say? Yep, user ID does not implement that interface. So we add this squiggly thing here. I think it's a tilde and that will solve the problem. So we run it and yeah, it works. So basically this tilde allows you to use any type that is an alias for this underlying type. So now I'm going to go over a more sophisticated real life example of how you might use generics um, in programming. There's three common functions that you run into map, filter and reduce and I'm going to try to create a mapping function using generics in Go. So let's check that out. So with a mapping function, you have an input, which is an array of values. And then you have an output, which is a function that mutates those values. So I might say n times two, and I expect the output to be an array two, four and six. So let's go ahead and try to implement this with generics. But first, we're just going to create a non generic function for it. So we'll say func map values. We'll have values, which is an array of int for now. And then a function, we'll call it map func, which is a func that takes in an int and returns an int. And then in the end, we're going to return an int array. So we'll say var new values array of int. We'll say for each value in that list of values we passed in, we'll say new value equals the mapped version of V. And then we'll add that to new values. Cool. And then in the end, we're just going to return new values. Awesome. So what we have here is a non generic, just a standard version of the mapping function. So let's go ahead and just see if it works the way we expect it to. So we'll say result is map values array of int one, two, three. And we'll pass in a function return n times two. And let's go ahead and print this. So let's go ahead and see if this works how we expect it to. So, yep, two, four and six, right? We're taking one, two, three and times two. Let's make it times three. Now, three, six, nine. Let's make it let's make it times five, five, ten, fifteen. So, yeah, it works exactly how we expect it to work. So once again, the problem, though, is that we can only pass in integers, right? If I try to make this float 64, let's make these unambiguously floats and I want to make these floats as well just across the board it just doesn't work because it's only accepting integers so again let's turn this into a generic function so I'm going to say t is constraints dot ordered so remember constraints dot ordered we have to import this this is not automatically included in your project once you import it you can use this and this contains a union of all the different number types and string as well. So we're going to say T that's our type and everywhere it says int in our function. We're just going to replace that with T. And boom, that quick and easy. We turned it into a generic function and let's see if that works. Yep. I'm going to assume this math is correct, but it looks correct. So the next thing I want to show you guys is that you're not limited to only using generics with functions. You can also use them on structs, for example. So let's say we have a struct called user and user has an ID and a name and some arbitrary data. We don't know what the data is exactly. We might be inclined to say interface. 
which technically allows you to use anything you want, but eh, generally you want to avoid using interface like that because then you have to cast that into what you actually want it to be and the compiler can't help you and it just sucks. So what we can do is after the struct name, add our brackets here, we can say T is type custom data. And we can say type custom data is an interface that can be say constraints.ordered so it could be any number or string and maybe we even want to make, allow it to be an array of bytes or an array of rune uh, just about anything but the whole point is we do have explicit typing here right and so here we say data is type t and so let's go ahead and say u equals user let's try to instantiate this so here we have our user and it looks okay here, right? ID name data, but the problem is it needs to know what specifically what type we want to use for data. And so we'll have our brackets here and we'll say, um, I'll let it be an int and then I'll let data be three. And then let's go ahead and print this and let's run it and see what happens. And yeah, it prints our user with the ID blank name, but data is three. Uh, let's allow this to be a string. Okay, cool. So the nice thing is that we have the flexibility for data to be practically anything we want. So we don't have to resort to using a plain old interface and relying on runtime checking. If I make that a string, then it doesn't complain and it compiles. So this is pretty awesome to give you an extra layer of flexibility in your data types without sacrificing safety. All right, so the last thing I want to show you guys is that you can use generics on maps as well. So we say type custom map is a map of, let's say, string to int. That's how we're going to start off. Well, what if we want the key to be more than just a string, right? Well, we could say interface, but nah, <laughs> we don't want to do that. So we'll say T and we need to define what T is. So T is comparable by the way this is a potential job interview if you're looking for a role as a golang developer you might run into this right they'll ask you what are the valid data types for the key of a map and the answer is comparable any type which is comparable which means basically any type where you compare one value to the other so you can say a and int equals b and int that works right i can say I could do the same thing for string. You can actually do the same thing for pointers as well. So it's just a blanket sort of alias for any type which can be directly compared to itself using the equals equals operator. So we'll say, OK, T is comparable. So that can be practically anything. And we'll say the value can be an int or a string. And then we'll say V here. So let's go ahead and instantiate this. We'll say make or say the key is of type int and the values of type string. And that works. M of three equals blah. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, that's how you can use generics in Golang to do more with less code. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, support a little YouTuber like myself, and thank you for watching.